welcome back. Uh, it's Friday, and um, it's time to send that message to Ifwa Aqua Harris. Uh, yes, yes, yes. How are you? Your messages. You're, not, great. you're not talking about anything else apart from xenophobia, right? We have other things to talk no, about right. as well, okay. including xenophobia. But it's very in sad, South right? It's very sad. It's very, very sad anyway. what's happening down mm. there. Um, a friend of mine who is South Africa, who, who South African, who lives in Ghana, says Ghanaians are funny though. They've been calling her Zeno. Oh my God! Nickname Zeno. So, so that's not funny. Uh, yeah, you know how reprisal. That's the reprisal attacks we're afraid of, right? Yeah. I mean, these things could spiral to other parts of African countries. Anyway, so let's hear you then. All right. Mm. So the world is agreed that what is going down in South Africa is not cool. We'll look at some of the public condemnation in the wake of the anti-immigrant violence. We'll also check into Ghana's High Commission there for an update. We would have brought you government's official position on this matter, but the Minister for Foreign Affairs won't talk to us. We'll tell you why. With everything going on in other countries, why would you risk everything, including your life, to travel abroad? Anything can happen on the journey. Just ask 12 migrants thrown overboard on their way to Italy. This weekend is going to see corporate Ghana get physical with the Joy Sports Invitational. That seems like it's going to be fun. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison and this is Joy News Interactive. I'll be right back. Now, foreign-owned shops in South Africa have been attacked and looted in East Johannesburg. That's the latest in a series of xenophobic attacks. The violence comes despite Thursday's rally against xenophobia, the coastal city of Durban, and condemnation from President Jacob Zuma. Many South Africans accuse migrant Africans of taking jobs in a country where the unemployment rate is 24%. At least five people, including a Ghanaian, have died in anti-foreigner attacks. Now, Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, Kwesi Ahoy, has been speaking to join us. In uh, South Africa, we have Ghanaian associations in all of them. We've been in touch with them through their leadership and individuals that we know. And they, they brought this uh, situation report. What are they telling you? Uh, Durban, uh, they said that there is fear, there is tension, because you really cannot tell when the next strike is going to come from. And that was when it started, when it, it, it reached its peak. But as of today that I'm talking to you, from the report, from all our the, the outstations, the situation is calming down. In fact, it has calmed down in a lot of areas. But there are a few hotspots in Johannesburg and, and a few other areas. Yes, because yes, we are hearing that it's spreading even though it seems to have dipped in Durban. No, no, it is not spreading as such. It's all the fear and the rumors that are being spread. Uh, because we are in touch with the Ghanaians who are living in those areas. Okay, so um, is the embassy in any way preparing itself in case uh, Ghanaians may want to seek refuge? Uh, we are, we've done two things. We have prepared, together with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, our headquarters, we prepared an evacuation plan should the situation get to that point where we'll have to evacuate our Ghanaian citizens. We prepared the plan and we send it to headquarters. Uh, we, we are looking at the situation. If it demands that we evacuate, we'll evacuate. This will not be the first time, Jifa. Remember, we've done that you know, in uh, Libya so many times. Now, I understand that the South African government has been meeting um, um, ambassadors and, and foreign officials uh, over this matter. What's the consensus going forward? Uh, South African Minister for uh, International Relations and uh, Cooperation, uh, the Minister for Home Affairs and the Minister for uh, State Security. The three of them with the uh, uh, high-ranking officials met all the African ambassadors today. They are very, very concerned. They, they, they regret very much the attack that has taken place. 
they believe that these attacks have actually whittled uh, the, the credibility and standing of South Africa. Uh, and they, they would want to believe that uh, this is not uh, like a targeted movement. It, uh, we want to label it as criminal opportunism. But, uh, 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 but uh, uh, Mr. High Commissioner, yeah. there are some who are not convinced because this happened in 2008, and so there are those who are skeptical uh, or cynical about whether the South African government actually took steps to prevent a recurrence of this. Your ambassador and his colleagues uh, I, I home this point very well that uh, in 2008 when this happened, uh, we do not have any, any evidence that uh, action was taken on those that were arrested and all. And uh, indeed, the ministers confirmed that they will let law and order work. They will, uh, they will enforce the law. And that, as I'm talking to you, in Durban alone, they've arrested about 75 uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the attackers. And they give all assurances that prosecution will start as soon as possible. What assurances can you give Ghanaians back home, especially those who have family in South Africa? That their relatives here uh, are, are being guided by the embassy as far as what not to do, where not to go, how to conduct themselves in this critical period. And, and if they go by our advice, I believe that we can save lives and property. Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, Mr. Kwesi Ahoy, speaking to Joy News there. Now, we wanted to give you government's official position on the attacks in South Africa though the, through the Foreign Affairs Ministry, but the minister, Hanatata, refused to grant Joy News an interview. It is not the first time, and we have the article on myjoyonline.com, and she's saying that I will not talk to Joy News, and in fact, um, she doesn't re grant any Joy News reporter an interview. I have a few colleagues who have been uh, told that, hey, I'm not going to give you an interview until you change your employer. So here the article is on myjoyonline.com. I will not speak to you. Foreign Minister tells Joy FM, and the Minister for Foreign Affairs um, told Joy FM that she would not speak to the station on the ongoing xenophobic attacks in South Africa. She said she would rather speak to Radio Gold and that if Joy FM wished, it should listen to the station for the government's position on the attacks. Now, let's give you the history. And apparently, uh, this thing with the minister can be traced to a 2008 disagreement with a produ the producer of a live political talk show now as communications director of the opposition NDC's campaign in the 2008 elections, Ms. Tete, believing that an NDC representative on the show was not arguing her party's position forcefully, stormed the station and demanded to be allowed on air to contribute to the discussion. Now, Joy News editor Raba Kumsin prevented her from joining the show and unhappy with the t turn of events, Ms. Tete praised those days for her calm explanation of the NDC's policies and left the station. Now, apparently after that, there was um, an altercation between her and Joy FM's Upper East Regional Correspondent at the time, and apparently she made some remarks um, were on work going on at a tomato factory, and uh, apparently, uh, she requested journalists there to delete the comments from the recorders and it was denied and so this has been a bit of back and forth and a bit of history about why the Minister for Foreign Affairs um, has refused to speak to multimedia group and there are lots of mixed reactions on the issue some people took it personally. Welcome back to Joy News Interactive with me, Ifwa Akwa Harrison. Now we've been telling you about the latest on what's going on in South Africa. We managed to speak to Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa 
Chrissy Ahoy, who um, gave us um, some comments on the issue. Now, I have a few of your messages coming through on WhatsApp. Babo Moses from Bonsu Kwanta says, the Ghana government should act fast to bring Ghanaians in South Africa home. So that's from Babo Moses. Um, Mike is also saying that uh, we should tell Ghanaians in South Africa that they should come home because everywhere you chew tiger nut is sweet. And non, um, famous from Yeji saying that the South Africans are not being fair to Ghanaians in other African countries. Anyway, um, we were trying to t speak to the Minister for Foreign Affairs here in Ghana, Miss Hanatete, but she wouldn't speak to multimedia group. And she asked us to rather go and uh, speak to Radio Gold, who she was going to give an interview to. And a lot of people seem to take her comments personally. A lot of people also seem to agree with her. But let's see who took it very personally. And um, Samson Aninini uh, said, Minister of Foreign Affairs really told Joy FM she won't give them uh, an interview about what the government of Ghana was doing to protect its citizens in South Africa. She did rather direct Joy FM to if they wanted to uh, go on to Radio Gold. This is Hannah Tete who slept in Joy FM on the eve of election two 2008. This is the lawyer who knows uh, the constitution and the rights of the citizens who pay her bills each month and sh she won't render a public service. Hashtag, it won't be long. So that's a comment uh, Samson posted and from Dela Kofi in reply to Samson. Um, so why can't Joy FM contact the Ministry of Communication for government's position on the matter? Must the Minister of Foreign Affairs necessarily speak to these issues when there's a chief government spokesperson? So that was De La Kofi's question to Samson Anyanini. Elo Mwemega, who works here at Multimedia Group, says, I am not shocked at her attitude. Last two months, I met her at an event and wanted an interview. This is what she said to me. I'm sorry, dear. I will not grant any Joy 99.7 I will not grant Joy FM an interview. Work with another station, and I will grant you the interview. She went ahead to speak with the other networks. Benjamin Joseph says, it's not about her necessarily speaking to the issue. It's the deliberate decline to offer Joy FM the interview. That's the issue. Isn't she the same person offering Radio Gold the interview? So that's from Benjamin Joseph. And these are comments we picked from Samson and Yenini's Facebook page. Um, Alaji Nasaru Abdul Rahman says, definitely she doesn't. The arrogance of power, the Nigerian election is not serving them any lesson at all. Dead goat syndrome. So that was a comment there, a long one. Um, people... Um, supporting the minister's action, saying that, hey, she, it's her right to refuse to speak to a media house, and other people um, saying it's not right for her to do so. Other people saying that, you know, multimedia group uh, misquoted her on one occasion, and she's decided to boycott the station. It's a long, 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 I don't know what to even call it, but hey, let's take what's trending now. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. Now, if you still have life, you really have to thank God because elsewhere, other Africans are being killed or are dying or have died. I'm talking about the migrants who were thrown overboard, Nigerians and Ghanaians to be precise, and also the attacks in South Africa. Let's go to Twitter and see the reactions of people on the xenophobic attacks and the killing of Ghanaian and Nigerian migrants. First tweet is from Daniel Danza. 12 Nigerian Ghanaian migrants thrown into sea for being Christian. Okay, I, I think you actually meant 12 Ghanaians and Nigerians. Next is from Aisha Dabo. 15 Malian Senegal Ivorian migrants arrested for throwing 12 Ghanaian 
Nigerian overboard after fights over religion. Hmm, SMH Africa. Okay, let's take this from Remy's Ruby. Why won't I love in Ghanaian? In as much as the power crisis is killing us and a huge influx of African migrants, we would never do this. Now, let's switch to the hashtag xenophobic attacks and see what people are saying. This tweet is coming from Kenna. President Mahama as ECOWAS chair has released a statement on hashtag xenophobic attacks. A bit cliched, the letter, but it will have to do. Final tweet I'm taking on the xenophobic attacks is from Maiso Buso. Mr. President only talks on television and internet. People who attack foreigners are on the ground, not on television. Hashtag xenophobic attack. This has been worse trending. My name is Lord Harris Dossari. Welcome back to Joy News Interactive and as you heard in What's Trending before the break, Italian police say they have arrested 15 Muslim migrants after they allegedly threw 12 Christian migrants overboard following a row on a boat en route to Italy. The Christian migrants said to be from Ghana and Nigeria are all feared dead. More than 500 people from Africa and the Middle East have died, making the perilous crossing since the start of the year. And we've been asking you on Facebook, um, considering the current economic status, seeking greener pastures abroad with all the risks, the only way to make it. And William Yawaje says it is the only solution now unless um, the change we are waiting for comes. Isa Hakubene says, not at all. There's no place like home because there are many bloodthirsty thugs masquerading as humans elsewhere. So those are your comments coming through on Facebook on that issue. Now moving on, this weekend looks exciting and it's because the Joy Sports Invitational is on. George Ado Jr. has all the details. Welcome to the studio, George. Thank you very much. Now what's the Joy Sports Invitational all about? Corporate Ghana meeting alongside multimedia at the Airwork Sports Stadium to have mm -hmm. sports. It's basic as that. There's going to be football, there's going to be tennis, there's going to be basketball. Just come together, let's feel the connection, let's network and go. That's exactly what's so all about. So venue is the El Wax Sports Stadium. Sports Stadium what's the time? 7.30 a.m. tomorrow till till. Till till till. Mm, bye bye. So which companies are participating? Oh, we have 14 companies, quite a 14. lot. We have Tigo, Multimedia, SDC, the list goes on and on. So what is multimedia? What are multimedia staff doing? I'm going to be, I'll, I'll play football. Okay. Uh, Ijalai says he wants to do some press up. It's not yet part of it. I'm trying press to see ups. if I can get some press what, up. What, what sport is that? What? Israel. I have to find a way to see if it goes in for Israel. And, and you know, everybody around will do something at least, including the ladies, everybody. It should be very exciting. I expect everyone to be there tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much, George Ado Jr., updating us on the Joy Sports Invitational, which kicks off tomorrow, 7.30 a.m. at the El Wax Sports Stadium. 14 companies taking part. Be there. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, there have been so many stories this week. We want to ask, which was the biggest for you? And, I mean, the stories that have gone down, uh, xenophobic attacks in South Africa, definitely one of them. And we have the whole thing about the ADA, ADA issue, uh, s s some of the stories, you know, we've been looking at as well, and then the Kwashiman shooting. So those are the three big stories for me this week. Which was the biggest for you? I say it's that story, sweetheart. Why? See, one person, in a minute, she was raped. In another minute, she was not raped. Fine, if she was raped, who took the video? I love that story because... It, it's a lie, that's how I see it, but so we're trying to like make it look right. I mean, she's a madman, a madwoman, sorry. She's a madwoman to actually do that and later come and say this and that. Master, I like the story because she's mad. And we shouldn't follow all mad women. Well, uh, for me, the biggest story is the xenophobic attacks on foreigners in South Africa. Why? Um, I think it is the biggest story because it has attracted a lot of attention from around the world 
and even from other terrorist groups such as the Boko Haram. Just today, the chairman of the Economic Committee of West African States, in the person of um, His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama, uh, has also issued a statement, has made some statement calling on the authorities in South Africa to, to as a matter of agency, end this particular canker. And, uh, and to the extent that Boko Haram themselves have issued a statement to the South African authorities to end this particular um, issue means that it is the hottest issue in Ghana and across. Yeah, I think the biggest news for the week for me is Ades' story. Why do you say so? Well, uh, when I heard of the story, I was really disturbed about a famous lady like that being kidnapped and being raped, and I felt like women are not well treated in Ghana. Yeah, so I was really worried about it because I I felt so much for women, but realizing that she faked everything for her to get something from the, 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 the boyfriend. It really hurts me. And I think that when issues happen in a country like that, authorities should really go deep into the story, find out the truth, and not just be surfacing it and really, I mean, they should go deep into the story, yeah. It's a South African issue. Why? Um, killing your fellow human being is wrong to me. More so a black African like them. It's very unfortunate. Uh, well, um, like I quote um, President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. He says, South Africans will kick down a statue of dead white man, but won't even attempt to slap a living one or a live one. Yet, they can stone to death a black man simply because he's a foreigner. Um, it's very heartbreaking without foreigners or without fellow human beings investing in your country. You alone cannot make your country uh, um, progress in terms of uh, the enlargement of the economy. Steve, welcome back. Thank you. What has been your issue this week? Um, what do you mean, my issue? The I biggest, say. the issue that stood out to you most. Um, I think, I think that a xenophobic attack so, yeah, is heartbreaking Africa. for me. I've seen yeah. some very horrible images. I, I can't, I can't even. Yeah, uh, people getting burned and all that. And it's I saw, terrible. I saw some children being yeah, burned, and yeah, yeah, I just can't yeah, take it. Yeah. So this week, a that that has been a lot of people me. have mentioned yeah. that as well, yeah. and also uh, someone is saying that. Other issue as well, Ada and issue, also yeah. I mean, I feel that other issue is just a lapse in our in our legal system, and so uh, if we're able to resolve the legal issues surrounding whether she's guilty or not guilty of any crime, yeah. then that's it. But All right. I, I do not think Ada will go to jail anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that plays. Yeah, we'll out. see how that plays. Well, out. enjoy the weekend. My name is Ifuakwa Harrison, and my name is Stephen Anti. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye bye. Thank you.